Haley Outen here from the American Digital Network studio, where we are in full countdown mode to the opening week of the college football season, and we're going to kick things off by previewing the UCF Knights. On one hand, first-year head coach Scott Frost arrives in Orlando to inherit a UCF team that finished the 2015 season without a win. On the other hand, the Knights are not far removed from a team that finished the 2013 season, ranked number 10 in the nation, won a share of the conference title in 2014, and has many of the pieces in place to make a dramatic turnaround in 2016. Frost comes to UCF after a highly successful run as an assistant at Oregon, where he helped the Ducks to a combined 79-15 record in seven seasons, not to mention his own playing career as a quarterback of Nebraska's 1997 national championship team. In his first head coaching stop, Frost finds a UCF squad that is hungry for a return to its recent success. The Knights have the luxury of 16 returning starters from last season, including eight on offense. Quarterback Justin Holman enters his third year as the starter, giving the Knights not only a proven veteran behind center, but one with championship pedigree. Holman will have one of college football's top young receivers at his disposal with the return of Traquan Smith, the 2015 American Athletic Conference Rookie of the Year, and should have even more options if tight end Jordan Aikens can return to form. Aikens was on his way to an all-conference caliber season last year before suffering a season-ending injury in Week 3. UCF's defense is also expected to take a major step forward thanks to the return of six starters. Seven of UCF's top eight tackle leaders from last year, including linebacker Chaquan Burkett, who had six and a half tackles for loss, and cornerback Shaquille Griffin, who emerged as a standout with 15 passes defended in 2015. We're not done talking about the Knights just yet. Coming up next, we'll be joined on Skype straight from Orlando. Shannon Green from the Orlando Sentinel will be live with us right here on the American Digital Network. Wipe the blood away from his face. Lynch on the move. Kind of a long throw. On behalf of the city of Miami Beach, it is my great honor to award the championship trophy to the Memphis Tigers. This is the time, time of year you want to keep playing. And his flowers, this is a design draw. Got a couple of good blocks. Great to the corner. He'll get in easily. Touchdown, USF. Now they go to the ground. This is Anthony Wales. Wales breaks three. Down to the 10. Five. He scores. Hey there, welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the ADN. We're talking UCF football and we're joined on Skype by the Orlando Sentinel, Shannon Green. Shannon, thanks for joining us today. Now that you've seen this UCF team go through quite a bit of transition and some drama last season, things have seemed to settle down. New AD, new head coach. How's the team looking right now just weeks out from the home opener against South Carolina State? Well, I think the biggest thing for this team is the mental transition that they needed to make because going 0-12, uh, not winning a, in a football game for the entire season, having a, a tenured coach resign in the middle of the season, seeing an interim coach take over, and then him leaving, um, they've just gone through a lot, you know, off the field and on the field. So I think the biggest thing for this new coaching staff was to make sure that these kids were mentally tough and prepare for the season and also bring some restoration to these guys because they're you know coach frost said when he took the job he wanted to make the game of football fun again and it's easy to sort of overlook that fact when we talk about football because we just assume yeah it's fun for these kids but when you've lost every single game in a season and you've won championships before football is not exactly fun for you anymore so that's been the biggest focus for this football team is just building these kids back up um, and getting their desire to compete back again. 
And with the return of Justin Holman, he brings quite a bit of veteran experience at quarterback. And he gets to work with a guy who has had quite a bit of success at the quarterback position, not only as a coach at Oregon, but he was also a pretty good QB himself. How has the Frost-Holman relationship developed over the course of the offseason? Well, Coach Frost has pretty much given equal opportunity to everybody to make an impression on him because for him, everybody's coming in with a blank slate. So he's not thinking about everything that happened in the past. He's starting from day one fresh with all of these guys. Holman does appear to be the standout and the leader. Um, obviously, he has experience. He's the incumbent starter. Last season, he had an injury that he had to overcome. He injured his finger during the Stanford game and was out for four games. Um, but it, so far, it appears, it appears that their relationship is strong and that he trusts Justin to be able to lead this offense. And we have to talk a little bit about Traquan Smith, the league's reigning rookie of the year. No question he had a standout freshman season. I think people are still talking about some of those catches. What have you seen in terms of his development with one college season under his belt? And do you think the, that he's going to be that consistent go-to guy this year for Holman? I think the biggest thing that we've seen, and when I, when I say seen, it's relative because all the practices are closed, so we haven't actually been able to see the guys play. Um, but I think the biggest thing that we've been able to witness off the field in Traquan is his maturity. You know, he's really coming into his own. He's understanding that he's got to step up to uh, the mantle of leadership this season in a way that he didn't do before, meaning being more vocal. You know, when you're noticing um, things that need to happen, say it. So I think that he's, he's actually said that to me himself, that he's really had to step in terms of being more vocal because he's naturally a more reserved guy. Um, so that's the biggest thing for him, just evolving in terms of his maturity and his leadership because physically he's already there. You know, for the most part, we've already seen what he can do, what he's capable of with the circus-like catches that he made last season. So it's more so been the leadership aspect of his game that's had to develop. Now defensively, six returning starters. Who's emerged as the leader of the defensive unit in the offseason, and what can we expect to see defensively in Frost's system at UCF? I think Jemias Pittman, um, defensive lineman, has really emerged as the leader for defense. And actually, he was one of the, the leaders last season as well, despite the fact that he was very young, because he's been a starter since he was a freshman. Um, he's really been able to galvanize guys in the line and really just serve as a focal point of the defense in terms of his tenacity, his toughness. He's very vocal. He's very feisty. You know, he's, he very much still wants to win. He's a competitor. So I would definitely say that Jemias Pittman has really sort of risen to that role in addition to Jemias Pittman but Shaquille Griffin I would say is definitely one of the leaders as well he's a senior he's from the area um, he's a very charismatic guy I would definitely say Shaquille Griffin has also been one of the leaders on this team I have to ask you after seeing this team go 0-12 last season have you seen any kind of determination this season to kind of use that as motivation and just under the leadership of Scott Frost have you have you just seen a different drive in them this year to make sure that doesn't happen again? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of their taglines this season is rise and conquer. You know, in addition to the many um, catchphrases, tags they have, hashtag UCF fast, hashtag UCF fierce, fast meaning their new offense, fierce referring to their defense. There's definitely a desire for this team to use the experiences of last season as a chip on their shoulder and use that as a way to motivate them throughout the season. They really want to surprise people with their improvement and they really want to prove to people that they're not an 0-12 team. This is a team that, you know, just two years ago, you know, or three years ago now, won the Fiesta Bowl. The next season they came back and won the American Athletic Championship. So they want to remind people that they are still very much in the mix. They still are one of the upper echelon teams in the American Athletic Conference, you know, and they want to prove that last season was just a fluke. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us on the show today, Shannon. I know we're looking forward to seeing Coach Frost and the Knights get started on September 3rd against South Carolina State. After the home opener, the black and gold are headed to Ann Arbor to take on Michigan before returning home to face Maryland. We'll have more previews for you this week and the rest of the summer right here on the American Digital Network. Thanks again, Shannon. Thanks.